Hi, I'm Michelle from Eyes on Science. Today we'll be exploring the fascinating world of bacteria and their extracellular vesicles, distinct structures with implications for bacterial EV isolation and study. So what's unique about them? It's all in the bacteria cell structure and growth rates, and the subsequent properties of EVs themselves. Ranging from 25 to 300 nanometers, these EVs can carry a diverse molecular load. Let's jump right in. You're probably most familiar with eukaryotic cells, those with a nucleus and organelles enclosed by a plasma membrane. But bacteria, a prokaryotic cell type, operate differently. These single-celled organisms don't have membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria or the Golgi complex, a cell membrane or a true nucleus. However, their unique structure doesn't hold them back. They still contain the necessary genetic material and cellular machinery for vital tasks like biomolecule synthesis and metabolism. Bacteria are generally smaller than eukaryotes, measuring between 0.5 to 2 microns, but size isn't the most significant difference. What sets bacteria apart is their speedy growth. With an average doubling time of just 20 minutes, they adapt quickly to environmental changes. This rapid growth, driven by complex gene regulatory networks, allows a swift and responsive adaptation. But not all bacteria are alike. They're often divided into gram-positive, gram-negative, or acid-fast groups. These structural differences directly impact bacterial EV formation, leading to unique biogenesis mechanisms that determine EV composition. For instance, EVs from a blebbing cell could be packed with membrane cargo, while those from cell lysis may carry both membrane and cytosol cargo. The key factor here? The cell's environmental response, which can significantly alter bacterial EV composition by shifting the dominant biogenesis mechanism. The cell's swift environmental response also sparks a fast adjustment in bacterial EV cargo, helping them adapt to new conditions. This process creates a diverse bacterial EV population, heavily influenced by environmental factors, like changes in culture conditions. Even minor shifts in these variables, often unnoticed by researchers, can cause cells to produce EVs of differing compositions or sizes, significantly affecting downstream studies. As with mammalian cells, it's crucial to promptly and thoroughly harvest bacterial cells, removing them to prevent the release of new EVs or dying cell fragments. Conditioned media, derived from bacteria grown in suspension, contains an abundance of cells, often requiring multiple methods for cell removal. Centrifugation can be helpful in palleting cells, However, the production of extracellular components can affect the pellet's consistency, complicating cell-free supernatant transfer. At this stage, filtration methods often come in handy. Filters with pore sizes between 0.2 to 0.4 microns are effective in capturing most bacterial cells while letting most bacterial EVs pass through. Bacterial cell cultures typically exceed 200 milliliters, which means concentrating the EV-rich supernatant is often necessary before employing an EV isolation method. Concentration is usually achieved through ultrafiltration techniques, using devices varying in processing capacities, fluid pressure forces, or filter pore sizes. More recently, tangential flow filtration has also been used. Size exclusion chromatography uses resin beads with pores that allow proteins to enter, but not EVs. As a result, the passage of proteins through the column is delayed, enabling the collection of an EV-rich isolate before a protein-rich isolate emerges. QEV columns based on this principle are a widely used EV isolation method in the eukaryotic EV research community. They offer a fast and straightforward way to isolate bacterial EVs while preserving their physico-chemical properties, which can be compromised by other methods such as ultracentrifugation. QEV columns ensure high purity by effectively separating EVs from contaminants like soluble proteins. Enhanced with automation capabilities via the automatic fraction collector, QEV columns offer great reproducibility. The QEV range caters to a wide array of sample loading volumes, 
from 150 microliters to 100 mils off the shelf, and even larger volumes through our custom solutions. QEV columns have already demonstrated their efficiency in isolating EVs from various bacterial species and strains. Once bacterial EVs are purified, there are a few things to consider. The first is storage. Just like with eukaryotic EVs, optimal storage is an ongoing research topic and an important one for reducing variability outside of isolation and analysis. Another consideration is the presence of endotoxins, or lipopolysaccharides, LPS, in bacterial EVs from gram-negative bacteria. LPS can be inherently attached to the parental cell, and therefore the bacterial EV, or it may be released in a soluble form. The presence of this highly immunogenic molecule requires meaningful experimental controls, particularly for functional studies. Therefore, it's crucial that you test your isolates for LPS and consider its potential impact on your research. Finally, contamination with bacteria, either from incomplete cell removal or external environmental sources can occur during bacterial EV isolation. Monitor this by culturing aliquots from your bacterial EV preparations. If contamination is found, it's best to discard the EV preparation as contaminating bacterial cells can release their own EVs and secrete LPS, impacting downstream assays. To learn more about bacterial EVs or how we can help you optimize your isolation, don't hesitate to reach out to us via our website at izon.com. Thanks for watching.